did I get better at shooting medium format film? So earlier this year, I released a video on my first attempts at shooting medium format photography. And oh boy, was it a struggle. That video was then followed up by my video about camera issues. Now, it's been about six months since then, and I wanted to do a follow-up video to discuss how things are going, have I improved, and do I now like shooting medium format film? Since then, I've shot infrared landscapes that whilst have not met my expectations, have been an interesting mix of mediums on all three of my cameras that have helped me create massive infrared landscapes compared to my 35mm shots. In the last six months, I've taken shots of the world painted red, bathed in a glow of hues of orange to simmering reds. This roll of Sinstal Red Rum may have actually been my favourite roll to shoot this year. These were both projects and experiments where I was trying to leverage the most I could out of the formats 6x4.5, 6x6 and 6x7. I found shooting in these formats quite a radical change. For the past 10 years, I've only had the perspective of 35mm and APS-C. I now have three main medium format cameras, all of them Mamiya's. My first Mamiya was the Mamiya 645. I ended up scoring a really good deal on my second camera, the Mamiya RB67. And my third Mamiya that I bought was the C220 because I wanted a 6x6 camera. If you were to ask me which is my favourite, the answers might surprise you. I think for me it has to be the RB67. I like the format of the photos compared to the others, being completely manual it is a lot more tactile to use versus the 645. The ability to switch film backs is a massive bonus. It allows me to shoot only what I need when I need. Whereas the C220 and my 645 only have one roll at a time that can be used. And unlike 35mm, I can't roll these rolls back into the canister. So when that roll is in there, that is what I have to use. I've actually used the RB67 the most with me shooting 19 different rolls through this camera with my favorite shots this year easily being mostly from this camera whereas I've only shot nine rolls in the C220 and only four in the 645 which I don't like to use as much as it has a bit of an issue with its battery. To finish off the year, I thought I'd shoot a few rolls in the Mamiya RB67 and the 645. I had some expired T-Max and some Fuji 800 as well as some Kodak Portra black and white which I'd been wanting to test. I loaded up the RB67 with the Fuji 800 and T-Max and then I loaded up the 645 with the Kodak Portra black and white. I started off with the portrait black and white as I had about 20 rolls sitting in my freezer and wanted to know if they were any good. I decided to shoot at box speed as supposedly these had been stored well. It was a very foggy day and that would be rather fitting for another reason. I was liking the mood and whilst I knew it was pretty mid-tone grey all around, I wasn't expecting this to happen. Just like the weather, this film stock is heavily fogged. I was hoping with this shot to get the water merging into the white clouds, but with this film stock so fogged, if my idea was gonna work, I'm not too really sure if I can truly know and we'll have to try attempt this again. The next morning was clear skies and it was stunning. I saw that the tide was low, so I went down to the rocks 
to the section I'd never been down to before and tried to get this layered shot. Knowing I wanted to take a more complex composition, I weaved my camera through the rocks till I found an alignment to give myself what I consider a more interesting shot. Whilst heading back home, I looked at the way the light was illuminating the beach and I thought it was beautiful. And with the clear skies, I had potentially a composition that I'd never created before. I continued walking and just as I was passing this bench, I saw an alignment between the ferry and the chair. So I decided to take this shot. That's what I enjoy about this camera. It's so easy to figure out what's happening in your composition. The RB's large viewfinder gives you so much clarity and detail that it can be surprisingly very quick to shoot on. I've taken this photo more than once recently, but I'm of the opinion that, that it is okay. Each day is different and maybe this is the final shot that I really love. The boats were so calm in the water I could not resist trying to frame up the reflections. Talking of framing, I've been trying to align views through objects that partially obscure the view to create little windows. Talking of framing, I've been trying something different with aligning the views through objects that partially obscure the view to create little windows. With the Arby's large frame, it can give you the range for these kinds of compositions. That might be more harder on, say, for example, 35mm or 6x4.5. In my trying not to be negative video, I said this view needed to be in black and white, and I was right. This morning proved it. The nice harsh morning light brings you into focus and with the widest lens I have for the RB, which I often do not use as much as I should, I got the trees above and again creating a view with context. Sometimes with the RB and its big wasteful viewfinder, when you have to do something that is up high, it can be hard to see. I had to be on my tippy toes when trying to get the last photo of this roll. I really wanted to capture the seats in alignment, as I like how seats can repeat in an image. But I also wanted to do the same with the boat and their reflections, which were all neatly aligned. Later on that evening, on this perfectly clear day, I decided to go out and try shoot an evening night photo of the city. I do find metering with long distances hard on the RB. I was then liking the reflections of the water and the way the church was illuminated, but I forgot to note with this camera to pay attention to the frame lines, so I ended up with a very cropped shot. As dusk finally settled into night, I waited and waited to get a shot of the illuminated fountain in a bright blue with the city behind it. However, I forgot to account for the change in light, so the shot definitely came in underexposed. A couple of days later, when the sky was again clear, I headed out to do some street photos with the 645. Having only shot a handful of rolls this year, I decided that I needed to use it, and maybe street photography is what this camera can be good for. I walked past this couple and their dog, and I knew I had to take this photo. Unfortunately for me, this shot was way too fogged. I have been playing around with framing. I'm not sure 645 has the right ratio for the shot, but I like the idea. I will work on this composition for 2024.
This guy has a really good voice. He's often at the market every weekend. And so far, this is the best portrait I've actually managed to get of him. I met these guys whilst I was out and I might be doing a project with them next year. Even if this film is bad, so is the framing of this composition. One thing I need to learn is to be better at holding these big cameras a lot more steady. I met this guy who used to create choppers and it's a shame this photo became so silhouetted, but I kind of like it as it seems to be a little bit more imposing. This shot to me is why the best photos are the ones you go out and take. If you don't go out, opportunities will not arise and photos will not present themselves to you. Likewise with this photo, I don't know many bikers, so going out there and giving myself interesting subjects is going to give my photos more of a range. Upon my return back home, I decided to use my last shot on a portrait of the local Greek barista who often makes my morning iced coffees. Unfortunately, this shot did not come out well and was heavily silhouetted, but I kind of like it for its own merits. I also just beforehand had taken this photo where I was trying to work on layered compositions, which I feel medium format lends itself to more than 35, just due to the fact that it's a bigger image and there's more detail. The next evening, I went out as I still had four shots left in the RV bag with the Fuji 800. Unfortunately, I don't think a photo in 67 is really the right framing for this photo and maybe needs to be taken on a tighter landscape shot on a 645. I decided to finish the roll that night and wandered about looking for places to shoot. I happened to stumble upon this small pizza joint in this alleyway and I really liked how the neon light saying pizza would look almost dead center of the frame. Previously, I had taken a photo of this shot with Porsche 100T. Unfortunately, I had not taken the photo in focus. It has taken me a while to learn how to master focusing on the RV, so that when I came back to the spot for my second attempt, I knew what I was doing. I had previously taken photos here, but none of them were any good. I was determined to nail this photo. I spent a bit of time to make sure everything aligned in every part of the photo I was going to be happy with. And I can say that I am. So to conclude this video, I do now enjoy shooting medium format, with me having shot several rolls this year. I feel like my hit rate for photos that I like or a portfolio worthy is far higher on medium format than 35mm now. One thing I've found is with medium format is to go to spots without any film in the camera so you can really see if a shot is worth taking as with fewer photos every shot counts. As always it's been real guys until next time. For now I will leave you with my favorite medium format photos from each roll of medium format that I've shot this year in 2023.